Well, my name is Jermaine Tolentino. I'm from Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska. Been collecting for maybe around 13 years or so. I've been known as the guy from Alaska because I've traveled to a lot of sneaker events in the past. I just moved to Portland uh, three months ago, but I brought about a quarter of my shoes with me. There actually is a big community of sneaker collectors in Alaska. Um, it's kind of secluded, it was a small community, but people like shoes, people like sports and basketball, and that eventually got me into collecting. So it did actually start with one shoe. It was the Air Force One. I was a big all-white Air Force One guy. I had uh, maybe about a dozen or so white lows, white mids, and then it just kind of blossomed from there. So I still have love for Air Force Ones now just because of that. I'd say around 2006, 2007, I was always online on the websites, on the forums, on ISS back then. Um, and there's, you know, PEs being thrown around in a small little thread. And uh, there's also a Jordan sample thread as well. And just being involved and being active in there, there's a few people I look up to. And I just started collecting PEs and samples and it just kind of snowballed from there. And I realized that that was my niche prototypes, you know, uh, hybrids, uh, things that are made before actual production. So this is an Air Max Astound tennis shoe and they use Jordan 10 tooling kind of as a prototype to see how a basketball sole would work on a tennis shoe. So this is a Kobe 6 prototype, different outsole, uh, no cage, uh, just completely different really aggressive midsole. All black Jordan 3 sample showcasing the elephant print. Really awesome leather. Early AJKO sample. It still says Air Jordan on the wings but the top half's leather, bottom half's uh, canvas and stuff. 50-50 sample. Uh, Air Jordan 7 uh, Olympic sample. Number 23 on the back. White triangle piece. Tumbled leather. Everything's different about this shoe. It's a crazy wear test sample. It's a uh, defining moments. Uh, Converse sample was supposed to be in the original Defining Moments package with him. Uh, they canceled the shoe and it was just the 11 and the 6. This was the very first PE that I've ever purchased. It's a Jordan 15 home color from Michael Finley when he played for the Dallas Mavericks and uh, since I got this pair in dead stock pristine condition, it kind of snowballed and I just started focusing more on player exclusives. So this right here is my number one shoe in my collection. It's uh, the Ray Allen 23. 23 is my favorite shoe. Ray Allen's my favorite player. I love this home colorway. There's like 10 Ray Allen 23 variations, but this is my favorite one. If I was to stop collecting today, this would easily be my crown jewel. I'm never selling this. This is going to the grave. This shoe is uh, my number two in my collection. It's the Deion Sanders Jordan 11. Uh, black Nubuck, black patent leather, red liner with the pull tab. They made this for him when they first retroed the 11 model almost like 13, 14 years ago. So this pair right here is, was easily the toughest shoe for me to acquire. It took me about five years to grab the shoe. It's game one. These two are a tie for me as far as, far as number three for my whole entire collection. It's obviously the uh, undefeated Air Jordan 4 and the uh, M&M Encore Air Jordan 4. People don't want to let them go. I mean, I don't want to let these go. I found these from another collector who I, I was friends with. This pair, I got lucky. Um, the person didn't know what they had because these were given away during the shady, the very shady Christmas sweepstakes. He didn't know what he had. Let's just say I got lucky and I got him for three digits. So this shoe is the number four in my collection. It's actually the rarest shoe in my collection, I would say. Well, you can't say rare. You can't judge rarity these days. I mean, there's a bunch of prototypes and samples no one's ever seen. But memorabilia-wise, this is pretty up there. It's a Michael Jordan game-worn Jordan 9 with his number stitched on the back and uh, it has an MCS bottom. It's not metal. It has the Nike patent pending logo. The upper deck pairs have a metal bottom. They released 45 of them with the upper deck casing but this has a MCS sole which is pretty rare. It was actually on eBay. I got them from a couple in Maryland and they really didn't know what they had. They had a friend who worked at Upper Deck uh, in the mid 90s. They put the shoe on eBay with three pictures. One was a side photo, one was a sole photo, and one was from the top. 
There was no 45 pictures shown, but I knew exactly what the hell they were. So I was like, shit, I gotta grab the shoe. I hit, I uh, messaged the, the, the seller. We worked out a deal. I was like, I'll give you this amount if you send them out today. And they did. These two are a tie for my fifth favorite shoe in my collection. This is the Zoom Kobe 1. It's the same color when he dropped 81. It's not the 81 special box release that they did in LA. This is an actual PE made for Kobe. You can tell because it's a lighter purple. So this is just a dead stock version of the same color he wore when he dropped 81. This is the exact pair that Ray Allen wore in the 2008 finals against the Lakers. The TGIM, the game is mine. This was in game four when he uh, was at the top of the key and was like, I got it, I got it. Because I think KG was going to set a pick. And he drove on Vujicic and finished lefty. And uh, it was a... Uh, it was in the bag after that, that was, the, that was a clutch shot, clutch layup. So I got the exact pair that he wore in that game. So those are my top five, but this is an easy honorable mention. Just like the Eminem and the Undefeated Fours, these meant a lot to me when I was first starting to get into um, samples and unreleased stuff. I was a big Air Force One and Dunk guy when the CoJPs were around, um, the Pro Bs. And then when the SV started coming around, I was a huge dunk guy too. And this was a shoe I never thought I would own. I finally tracked them down about three or four years ago. And uh, I don't know, I think they're good, leaving my collection. There's a lot of kids getting involved in shoes now and people want to get into all the exclusive stuff because they see people posting all these LeBron 7s and stuff that are really crazy and exclusive and limited. Just buy what you like, I mean. At the end of the day, they're your shoes. You own the shoes. Who gives a fuck about what everyone, what anyone thinks? I mean, I have a bunch of rare shit on the table. These could mean nothing to some other collectors, you know what I mean? They could say, oh, I can't wear any of them. There's cleats on the bottom. You know, they're not my size. I don't care. They're my shoes. You know, I put the money, time, and effort into buying these shoes. There's a lot of pairs on my hit list that I have yet to acquire, but the number one pair is, uh, it's the Jordan 9 PE made for Kobe Bryant. He never wore them on, you know, on, on court, but I, I'm a huge fan of the Jordan 9 player exclusive model. And that is a top pair for me.